Hello friends, this video on isolation of elements part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we'll discuss another method for concentration of in fact sulfide ore. This is used to concentrate sulfide ores and this method is called froth flotation process. In fact, we studied about this method in the previous chapter surface chemistry chapter. This method is used to remove Yang-Yi particles from sulfide ores. Please note, this is used only for sulfide ore. The process is pretty uh, simple. This is my raw ore, raw sulfide ore, I'll say. This is my input. And we mix, we powder it. We powder it and then we mix it with water. This is my water. Now, the sulfide ores, if you mix in water, it becomes wet, right? But we don't want it to become so much wet. So, we'll add something called collectors. So, we'll add something called collectors. So, what collectors will do is, it will enhance the non-wettability of the sulfide particles. And the collectors examples are my pine oil, or fatty acid. So, these are my collectors. So I will use this collector so that the particles, the sulfide particles should not get that much wet because we are now putting this in the water. Okay. Also here, you know, we, we, this is froth, right? So we should try to maximize this froth and we can maximize this froth by using froth stabilizers. So we have something called froth stabilizers. So this froth stabilizers will try to make sure that you get more and more froth. Correct. And froth stabilizers examples can be chrysols, aniline. So these are my example of froth stabilizers. Correct. So what we do here is we take the raw sulfide ores and then we, we powder it. First thing is we powder it. We powder it and then we add water, right? And we also add collectors so that my sulfide ore particles it doesn't get that much wet. Example of collect collectors of pine oil and fatty acid. We also add froth stabilizers so that we get more and more froth, right? And now what happens is the sulfide particles actually cling or stick to this froth. So, so if you see this blue ones, small very light blue ones are the sulfide particles. They stick to the froth. Since they stick to the froth, and you collect the froth in another container. So this area has my sulfide particles. And then you can dry it to get the sulfide ores back. So what you get is a concentrated sulfide ore. And that's why this process is called concentration of sulfide ore. Right? That is froth flotation process. Right? So, see the only logic is the, the sulfide particles get stick to the froth. And we collect the froth somewhere else to get highly concentrated sulfide ore. But to achieve this, what we are doing is we are adding collectors so that sulfide ore doesn't get wet. And we are adding froth stabilizers to get more and more froth. And the impurities, if you see, settle down because the impurities are generally heavier and they settle down and it is collected. So to get more and more froth, what we do is we pass air from this pipe. And if you pass more and more air from this pipe and this whole thing rotates, if this thing rotates, you get more and more froth. Typically, you can try this in your home. You put some, um, you take a bucket of water and put detergent. You will not get froth. But if you just try to shake that water, then you'll see more and more froth coming up. So same thing we are doing here. This whole thing rotates and creates motion and this air, this combination of air and this motion creates more froth. Correct. So as I told this rotating paddle, this is my paddle actually. 
So this is a rotating paddle. This agitates the whole mixture and this draws air from this pipe and creates more froth. And froth is light. We know that froth is light. This is light. Light, very light. Since this is light, it can be easily skimmed off. Right? And we are collecting it here. And then it can be dried and the concentrated sulfide ores are recovered from that. Now the question is, if you have, this is a tricky question. So in this scenario, what we discussed was, we had, let's suppose PBS, and we had stone, we had iron, we have, uh, let's suppose, uh, clay. So these were my gangway particles, right? So we use froth protection process and this gets stick to froth. And these settle down as impurities. Correct? This is a normal scenario. But what if we have a, sulf a two sulfide ore mixture? For example, I have ZNS and PBS both. So I have an ore which I got from the earth and these, this ore has PBS, ZNS and plus other impurities also. Right? Other impurities, for example, clay and let's suppose that we do all three. Now you want to separate them. So if you use a normal froth flotation process, what will happen is these, both these particles will stick to froth, right? And these particles will settle down. But you want to separate these two also. So these can be done by adjusting the proportion, uh, the proportion of oil and water. If you see, we are using oil. So to separate these kind of uh, ores, the first method can be we can adjust the oil proportion. So with that, only one of these will get stick. Or the better way is using depressants. I'll talk. I'll tell you about depressants. This is a better way actually. If you use depressants, they can then we can easily separate them. What depressant does is depressant will allow only one of these particles to stick to froth. Why? Because it will react with other particle. For example, in this case, in this case, if I use depressant as NaCN, in this case, I have zinc sulfide and lead sulfide, these two ores, and I use NaCN as a depressant. What NaCN will do? NaCN will prevent zinc sulfide to mix with froth, but it will allow PBS, that is lead sulfide, to mix with froth. So with this, if you see, in the froth, we'll have only lead sulfide. Because they'll react actually, and they won't, uh, it will form a complex and it will not, uh, it will not stick to froth. Correct. So if you have scenarios like this, where you have two different sulfides, and you want to separate them, you can use depressant. That's the best way. Because this depressant will react with one of these form a complex and that will not stick to the froth but the other one, the other sulfide will stick to the froth. So you have to select a proper depressant based on your ore type. Okay. Now I'll tell you a very encouraging story. It's a washerman story. See, the whole idea of the froth flotation process came from a washerman. So there was a washerman and she had innovative mind. She was very innovative. So, and her clients were, these are all her clients, the client one, and these are also her client. Or clients or customer, you can say, right? So she had various clients and one miner and one chemist. So this, is a, this guy is a chemist. Is a minor. So she had a minor client, she had a chemist client, or she had a minor customer, or she had a chemist customer. So while washing miner's clothes, because see, if minor is her client, she has to wash her clothes, right? So while washing the minor clothes, she noticed one day that 
the sand and other dirt particles fell to the bottom of the wash tub. For example, this is the wash tub which she was using. It's easy. And she found that all this sand and other particles they settled down in the wash tub, where which she has got from the clothes. Let's suppose there was a cloth here, right? So this is a cloth, and from this cloth, these particles settled down. That is okay. But what was surprising was that the copper bearing compound that again came from the cloth of the miner, they were caught up in the froth. So this is the froth here, right? Because we are using uh, soap. So all these copper bearing particles, I'll say. So these copper bearing particles were caught up in froth or you'll say soap sands, right? So this froth, in this froth, all the copper bearing particles were caught up. And she was a little surprised why some particles are stuck up in the froth and other particles are at the bottom. So she explained the whole scenario about this minor cloth to her chemist client. And the chemist client was Mr. Carey Everson. So Carey Everson, he used this idea actually to separate copper compound from the rock earth metal on a large scale because this was for the copper compound. He used this idea and to separate copper. And with this, we came up with the process of froth flotation process. So with this, this whole froth flotation process came into picture, right? And since it was used to extract copper from even uh, a low quality ore, copper mining became profitable, copper price came down, right? And the copper production scaled up in the world. So with that, it leads to a lot of development because copper is used in the development. We know that, right? Copper, steel, these are used. So the copper production shot up, price went down because of this process. And this leads to the development. So you see, everything started from the washerman. We give credit to Mr. Carey Everson, but again, the washerman also gets the credit. So with this, uh, the idea behind, uh, the main reason why I'm telling the story is anyone can think. So it is innovative mind which brings change. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.